my name's Kevin. We've got Daniel Beardle, who's uh, uh, on our podcast. We've just started up our, our, our first podcast for both sides of the fence. I'm a sales agent down in the Hills District of Sydney. Daniel's a buyer's agent service in Sydney. I'm sure all parts of New South Wales and Australia for all of his clients. Um, we've got our first guest on our podcast today, which is Jordan Bulmer up from McGrath in Terrigal. Uh, Jordan, if you don't mind giving us a bit of an overview of what your life is like at the moment, what your role is and what you're about. Well, I'm excited to be here, which is good. So first thing in the morning, um, I guess I'm known for my role in McGrath's number one team. We've just won number one again in McGrath just last week. This is the fourth time uh, in five years. So awesome. uh, I'm a partner in this team, been here for, for five years now. Um, yep. And yeah, learn a lot of awesome. the way. The cool. big so number how long have you been there for? I've been in real estate. I'm 27 now. I've been in real estate yep. really my whole life since I was 20. Young life, but I've been working with Matt and Trev for five years now and become a partner in the team after two. Cool. So, look, obviously, you're quite, I think, well known with it through the industry now um, with what you guys are doing. Um, what What's kind of your daily role? What, what is, what's your part of the team? Uh, obviously, you're an integral part. You're all over social media. What's your role in the business? Yeah, so we've got six team members. So yeah. everybody knows Matt Steinway. Obviously, he's been around for a long yeah. time, 25 years. Um, yeah. And then his, his business partner was Trevor Hamilton. He's been with Matt for about a decade now. Very, very good agent. Um, yeah. And then myself, two PAs and, uh, well, it's kind of a junior agent. So my, Matt and I work together on everything. So if yeah. I list a property, Matt goes as my second agent. If Matt lists a property, um, I go as his second agent. We both manage the owners. We both manage the buyers. We both go to the appointments. Pretty much if you get Matt, you get me. And if you get me, you get Matt. Um, yeah. But I also do business with Trev and Trev with Matt. It's sort of like the three of us as sales agents, as pillars within the team. Um, but we all work together and we've got two girls our PA, Ash, used to work for John McGrath for a long time. So she's very, very good. Um, and then we've got another PA and then a junior agent. So essentially three three agents in our team, um, two PAs and a junior. So that's that's cool. that's the role. Um, Matt, and I, Matt, myself and Trev only do dollar productive activities. That's it. The girls pretty much clean up everything else, the marketing, anything not dollar productive. And um, Charlie is a junior agent is just learning the ropes. So. Cool. Now, obviously, you started in a hyper. Well, you've come across to a high performing team. You guys are doing what? Something just over 20 deals a month, is it? We wrote 8 million this year. Wow. The big that's, 8 million. Wow. That's, that's just next level. That's, that's just on a different level to pretty much near everybody in the game. What are you guys doing? Like, I know you guys are obviously super hard working, but what do you think separates you from? The, the guys that are doing like myself, one, $2 million uh, compared to people that are doing $8 million. Mm. Well, I was only talking uh, about this to Matt when we did a podcast um, last week, when we won number one for the first time, it mm. was, it, it, when we won the award, it was almost fake. Like it was mm. like you know, we held the award up, but the disaster and the train wreck and the energy and just how everybody was living was possibly the worst that year of our lives. We hated each yeah. other. It was like pushing a triangle through a square. It just, mm. it was the worst. And after we sort of like were a bit like, we almost didn't deserve it because to get there was at all cost. But yeah. we wrote $4 million then, mm. four and a half maybe. And we doubled mm. our business in four years. And I think our work ethic was the same, but we just learned to do nicer, less stressful business, I think. Yeah. Um, but we keep it really simple. So before yeah. I started with Matt, I did a, a, a degree in marketing. That was like my thing. And when I got a call from his business partner to come work with him, my first answer was, fuck that. I'm not working in real estate. <laughs> There's not a chance. And he was very persuasive as most real estate agents are. And I did. And Matt poached me a couple of years after that, after that. And that was the end of it. But what I've learned from Matt is he keeps it very simple. So when I first started in the team, our business plan, which we had on the wall, 
was 10 listings and 10 sales. That is it. That was the only thing that we chased. Nothing else, not calls, not this, nothing. 10 listings, 10 sales. And on the, the whiteboard in front of us, we had listings with 10 spots and sales with 10 spots. And all we did was look at that every day and go, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? And four years ago, 10 listings and 10 sales was like a bit like, oh, like that's going to be hard. And then we started mm. hitting 10, 10 listings, 10 sales. And then we did that comfortably. And then we went to 13 and then hit that comfortably. And then 15 and now 18, now 20. If we don't do 20 listings and 20 sales a month, like we're doing something wrong. Sometimes we do 30, mm. sometimes we do 41. Yeah. We did 38 listings and 40 sales. But if Massive. we operate at 20 and 20, and that's all we focus on, I think we pretty much hit it every time. Yeah, wow. And, and I, I guess what's really driving the business, because I, I know Matt's obviously going to have a lot of referrals and repeat business, but are you guys going out and chasing new business too, or are you guys kind of just waiting on referrals and what have you? Nobody would work like us in this area. Mm. And, I, and I don't like talking. I don't really like talking about myself and what we do and all this sort of stuff, but I kind of have to, to give you an insight into our team. So I don't mm. want to come across like a bit of a mm. wanker. It's more like me trying to tell you what we do. Like yeah. people wouldn't actually see the work ethic. Like in a normal, mm. in a normal market, Matt and I are up at four at the gym. We're mm. talking at five o'clock. We've, I'm in the office at seven, but, but from five to seven, we've already put together two deals in our head for the day. Like yeah. everybody else hasn't even woke up. So yeah. our work ethic for the area, like, and there's, everybody works hard, but it's like a different work ethic. It's like 24, seven, seven days a week. And we just take time out for family and things like that through the week. Like there's no days off really. We try and have a Sunday off, but constantly working. Um, yeah. But Matt, Matt, as the leader from the front, his, his thing is prospecting. He is like an yeah. absolute animal at it. And coming into the team, nobody's really had a choice not to do it. Like it's like if you don't prospect, you're out pretty much. Yeah. Like yeah. so old door knock still to this day, two hours a day, every day, yeah. non-negotiable. Like, yeah. and, and, sorry, you go. Is that, is that the same with the other guys, the junior guys that are under you as well? Yeah. So, so yeah. Matt, Matt, Matt does different business now. Like he only deals with people. How do I say this? Not people he wants to deal with, but mm. sort of people he wants to deal with. Like if, if somebody calls and says, hey, um, can Matt come out and look at my property? And he, they don't know anything about him. He won't go them there and try and convince them to work for him. Yeah. Like he has no interest in that. If they don't know his profile, he doesn't want to work with them. Like he's got a lot of referral base. I think 80% of his listings come from 20% of his clients. And that's yeah. kind of all he does is service that 20%. Um, and then our market share is just like you couldn't compete with it in our suburbs. Yeah, astronomical. We got we have the same similar sort of dominance down in hills um, where we have that sort of thing. But I, I get what you mean. You, you get you get most of that business from that small selection, at least when you've been in the industry for or the game for a very long time. Um, you've obviously hit some massive goals this year or this past financial year. What's next year's? We're chasing number one in Australia now. Okay, overall. Yeah, overall. Alexander Phillips, wow. love, love him to death. <laughs> He's an absolute animal. I went down and trained with their team quite a few times. Prue is just phenomenal, but it's yeah. very hard. Our average sale price is one and a half million. So to, yeah. to rock eight million, we have to sell 250 houses. And just the, the sheer amount of work that comes with that, even just to get the listing live and to deal with the amount of inquiry and vendor meetings mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. is tricky. So we've... We sort of have to work out like how do we go from 250 to 350 but like the wheels don't fall off we still enjoy it and so we're trying to work that out at the moment what we're trying to do is when a listing comes in we give the listing we will say to the person you won't hear from matt and i until it's live now because when your property's on the market you want to know that matt and i are only focusing on your property and getting you the best price not picking signboards for people that are coming on the market. So what Ash will do is she'll talk to you from now until the marketing process, till the like the listing goes live. Matt and I will be here the whole time if you need us. We'll be at the photo shoot, but predominantly all communication to Ash until it goes live. So I think that's 
opened up because we'll have carrying 50 listings at once. So 50 yeah. listings, 50 owners calling you between agency to live, like that's enough work. Just Your whole day it. spent. Done. So Yeah, your whole day spent. I, where, I had a day last week. Yeah. yeah. I had a day last week where I spent three hours on the phone to one vendor with multiple different issues. So I get what you mean. It can eat up your day really, really, really quickly. Um, it, it, what other provisions are you putting in place so the wheels don't fall off going from 250 to 350? When I first started with Matt, he was very, and most principals and lead agents are, it's very hard for them, even for yourself. I, I don't know how big your team is, but mm. to hand over key tasks to an assistant or a buyer's agent and know that it's going to be done to the level that you want to do it is hard. Mm. So every year that I work, like I almost know what Matt's thinking before he's thinking it because yep. We're not just business partners, but we're also best mates. So mm. I almost know what he needs to know, what he doesn't. Um, Ash is so capable from working with John McGrath that, like, if you give her something, you know that the the follow up, the execution of the task is going to be as good, if not better, than if Matt and I did it. So I think having a team around you to take up all of that non dollar productive um, work, but still do it at the level that you would do it like to make yep. sure that the real wow experience through the whole process has been has been something that we've tried to work with i think we have the best team we've ever had right now so perfect mm. it's exciting times ahead yeah and, and with you guys obviously you've um with yourself i've seen that you're quite into personal development and what have you but in terms of getting to that next level obviously developing personally and with your business and everything is going to be quite important to grow that business too. I know you're under a great leader, but are you doing much coaching elsewhere? Are you doing much personal development elsewhere? Where, where are you about with that? All day, every day. All day, so, every day. Yeah. I, I don't watch the, it's not like, oh, I don't watch the TV because blah, blah, but I don't watch TV. I don't listen to radio. I don't get caught in external noise. Like, mentor box and audible is like my thing if there's any mm. spare time if there's any spare time through the day i'm on the phone to somebody yeah. sometimes i'll just will just scroll through my phone and go i haven't spoke to them in ages and just call but outside of hours when i don't feel like talking to people like if i go and play golf i'm listening to a podcast but i always call people too and ask well what would you do here what would you do there outside of our team because there's lots of good agents, like heaps and heaps and heaps. And even in our area, there's lots of good agents. And I'm, I'm like quite good friends with a lot of them. And I've found over the years, everybody has one or two things that they do that's really good. So for me personally, I get like Matt's very good, but I get a little bit from everybody too. So I'm always learning, always. And always yeah. bouncing things around with negotiations. I pro practice my listing presentation 300 times probably. So yeah. yeah, it's important. But even for yourself too, like... Like I think getting like your morning routine is really important. Like mm. if it doesn't mean you have so, to get up at four, but if even if you get up at six and just go and watch the sun come up mm. and get a coffee and chat to some people down in your local area and go for a run for 500 meters and then work to a kilometer. It's there's something about doing Matt says waking up in like, like getting sweaty in the morning that does something to like your mental ability throughout the day. So yeah, mm. I think that's important. I believe so. That. Just quick, what's your routine in the morning, Jordan? At the moment, it's a little bit different. And I'll be really honest, towards the end of last year, I didn't train for three months. Like when we were uh, like chasing number one, all I did from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed was work, essentially. And um, I normally will wake up at 4, 4.30 and go to the gym, finish at the gym at say 5.30, get a coffee. I always go to a different coffee shop every morning. Um, and then pretty much six o'clock, I'm slowly getting into the day. Seven o'clock, I'm in the office every day. Yeah. And how long have you been like that for? Forever, really. Forever, yeah. Yeah. I, like looking back before, I think once you get a bit, bit of momentum around your career and things like that, it gets... I started at six, baby, and then went to 5.30 and then went to five. Um, but I like 4.30 only because I like training at the gym with nobody there. So it's not like I get up yeah. at 4.30 to be like, oh, look at me, I get up at 4.30. It's more I just like getting up at 4.30, train at the gym with nobody there 
And then sometimes I might even surf after the gym, like if I feel like yeah. it and it's good. Um, it just gives me that space because sometimes, as you know, in real estate, it's just things at you all day, every day. And I feel that space in the morning. Yeah, it gives me time to breathe, but then I mean, I sleep at 8, 8.30. So yeah. it, it cuts it off at the other end. Some people do the opposite and wake up at 6 and go to bed at 11. So I just think yeah. you just got to work out what works for you. Yeah, that's interesting you say 8, 8.30. Do you have a deadline in terms of your last appointment or is it just anything goes? My, my daily routine, I don't like calling it an ideal day, but normally when I wake up at 4.30, I'll do the emails. So mm. we'll, if you've got 50 inquiries, I might wake up. Say there's two that come overnight. There might be 100 emails. So I get rid of them straight away because I even like that people wake up and go, oh, gee, Jordan was replying at 4.30. I like mm. that. And then I don't have to think about it again. So I get rid of all of that. So all I need to think about while I'm at the gym is what I need to get out of today. And then I start the day in the office. The first thing I do is we get a vendor list. And this is what I've learned from Matt, which is really good. So might be 30 vendors. And the first thing that I do in the morning will is call the vendors. Morning, yeah. Jordan. This is what happened yesterday. We had 10 inquiries, got an inspection on Friday. Just wanted to let you know that I'm on it. If there's anything else that you need to know, I'll be in touch. Bang, 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 bang. Done. Golden. Golden. What time do you start that process, Jordan? 8, 8.30. I might even text though sometimes. Like if I'm at the gym and I think about something for an owner, I'll text them at five. Buzz me mm. when you're up. Just wanted to let you know that this happened overnight, working really hard on it for you. So yeah. I think with owners, and this is what stresses agents out, and I'm not the best of it at, at it by all means. Like I just think it works for me to get it off my chest in the morning because you know what it's like once you start your day, it's five o'clock and you don't know what's happened. But if you've mm. spoken to your vendors in the morning, you lose all that anxious feeling of, oh, I didn't speak to blah, 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 or they're going to call me, or even if there's mm. nothing to say. I'll be like, hey, Kev, I've got nothing to tell you today. I just wanted to let you know that I'm all over it today. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bang. Mm. Yeah. It's true. Get the hardest tasks out of the way first. The, those uh, minuscule tasks that you just need to get pumped through. So that's a good one. I'm probably going to implement that one. So thank you. Yeah. Um May, in terms of younger agents that are going to be watching this, because there's, there's a ton of young agents that are coming up in our office, uh, what would be your advice for people that are new into the industry one, two years, the biggest yeah. leverage point you found? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, see, I think everybody sort of has their own path. Like, I, I think you've got to understand where do I want to be in... When I first started in real estate, I was just like a maniac, like dropping letters, this, that, that. I had no idea what I was doing. I was with a good agent, but mm. like not really, like not super experienced, just good in his own right because it's not a very competitive market and all that sort of stuff. But when I actually stopped after a year and went, okay, where do I want to be in five, 10 years, like in my career, because this is a long game and everybody knows that. I think a lot of people come in and expect the the nice cars and the flashy watches and all of the bullshit that comes with it straight away. But it's the fucking mm. hardest career in the whole world, physically, <laughs> emotionally, roller coasters. There's times that I earned no money for four months. I had to put money back into the team to pay our staff. Fucked work. <laughs> but that's why you just got to think of it as like a massive long game. But I decided in myself, and this is why all of my digital marketing only promotes nice properties is that I wanted to deal with, high-end properties for our area. That's just what I wanted to do. I'll take any listing, but I wanted to start now just being known in the area for nice properties. And that's why I really respect working for Matt because he was the person selling all of the nice properties. And then over the years, he would list the properties and I would sell them. And I'd just take great care of these people. Uh, I've just listed one in Avoca for 10 million. And it was yeah, just- wow. It was, and that will be the highest price on the Central Coast properly probably and literally just for meeting a guy wowing them and just being a young guy that's always on i just call and say hey it's jordan do you need anything like can i help you with any of your real estate needs at the moment nah all right anytime bang hey yeah. like it's jordan like just like i wanted to be their go-to person so for me yeah. i only wanted to deal well I, I want to in the coming years just deal with nice properties so mm. work beside matt was a decision for me to play the long game to build my client base. So in time, they'll come back back around to me. But some people go, I've got no interest in working for somebody. I'm 30, I've 
uh, world's best car salesman, all of this shit. And they go out with ego and just go ha- like ham and get like retire in a couple of years, not retire, but just get they out. Burn they, out. They, they burn out. They burn out. So I think it's like, where do I want to go? Play the long game and just, I'll let my ego get in the way in the beginning. Debt, cars, the shit, just the, the stuff that makes no fucking sense. No investment properties, car, no money, looked great, but in, internally like losing my fucking mind. And now I'm like just about to buy my fourth investment property. I've got a Toyota Hilux, which is just an average car for around here. Money in the bank, no stress, like just... Like I've got my investments, but rent a, a one bedroom apartment for four hundred dollars above the office. Happiest I've ever been. Yeah, I've nothing yeah. to prove to anybody anymore. Like so, for yeah. a young person, I think just get in, just focus on doing a good job, and just just get go go hard at it. Work out where you want to be in five years, and just keep chasing that goal. That's some valuable valuable advice, especially cars. Like I. I remember it was a couple of years ago, like a year or two ago, I messaged you on Instagram about your car and I said, oh, like I saw you, I just saw, I saw you sold your car and you're now driving like a beat up you. That's really inspiring. And I had this like hotted up golf R, spent a ton of money on it. And mm. I thought, oh man, I'm stressed. I'm not making any money. My repayments are through the roof. And I thought that's a really good idea. And I sold the car because of your Instagram post and Immediately after that, like it was a big change because I'm not I'm not walking around stressing with commission breath, knocking on everyone's door, trying to make my next repayment. That's the hundred percent the thing what you said too, commission breath. Like when you're chasing a, a sale to, for the sake of your living, nothing works out well. Mm. Like that's so right. You're like going, I need to fucking do some business, otherwise they're gonna like take my car. What? <laughs> What an anxious way to live. But I think I when you first start, like everybody wants to show that they're doing a good job. Like, like, like just up, even our generation, we just, we're always comparing ourselves to others. I'm the most guilty of it ever. But I think mm. the better you get, like Matt said to me the other day, why haven't you posted number one? Normally I'd be like, number one, like in your face. Like, but I have nothing to prove anymore. Like I already yeah. know that I'm a good agent. Like, but early on, it was like I almost needed to hide behind all of the flashy stuff to try and prove that I was good. But it wasn't the yeah. answer. It gave me more stress. Like, yeah. So it's it's really interesting. But it's the first trap that young agents get into every time. Like you see these photos on – and that Lords of Property have roasted me a few times. I love it. But <laughs> like I look on there sometimes and I think, my God, no wonder everybody hates our industry. Like – People just a respect. bunch of dicks. Oh my goodness. Like, yeah. So for a young person, they just need to do a good job and everybody respect them, especially older people. When I was turning up in that car and they're like, oh, this isn't the um, the car that I expect to real estate. I said, listen, this is what happened. Like I had no idea. I was earning no money. I had all this flashy cars and I had to get rid of it. Now I'm driving this U, but I'm like still do a real estate. Okay. And the person would be like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, well, I had the same thing. I had the same yeah. thing a, a few months ago. I rocked up to a house. I've just got a standard golf now, like the standard run of the mill, 15 grand one. Rock up to a house and the guy goes, oh, I really like you. Before I even walked in, I said, why? And he goes, you're the only you're the only agent that didn't turn up to my house in a Merc. I said, oh, cool. Mm. So it does, it wins people over. Are you the principal in your office or do you, uh, no. do you have a team? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've got a team. I've got a team of four assistants that are under me at the moment. Yeah, well done. Thanks. How, how, so, how long have you been in the industry for? Um, I've been in the industry for, te- well, this is my 10th year now, um, but yeah, I've been my own agent for three years. But I've only really started to hit strides in the past 12 months. It's, it's such a long game, isn't it? So it is. Most- it's a long game. 10 years. You've been in it for a decade, and it's now just starting to work out. So do it have the emotional, like stability to actually stick to something for 10 years it's, it's the young generation we get we we're young like i'm i'm young but you get these 20 year olds in that want all of the pay like no experience they just want to work when they want to work like and you're like what's going on here like, i would have washed toilets like yeah back in back in when i had no no money like when i was 17 18 i won't get into my story but i was pretty much out of home from 16 I used to read John McGrath's book and I used to say, I'd wash his shoes for a hundred grand. Like I'd like, 
it doesn't, it didn't matter to me. Like I just would do anything, but it's really changed a lot. Like nobody wants to prospect. Nobody wants to do the actual work that it takes to be successful. They just want to open a property and drive a nice car and bank a few hundred thousand dollars a year. It's just not the answer. Yeah. That's, uh, it's like the Kardashian effect, really. That's so insane. Jordan, do you mind, do you mind touching on, energy management and something I've heard you and Matt talk about quite often in your podcast. And it's something I'm very um, conscious of implementing in my life. So do you mind telling me how you go about managing your energy and how Mm. working the hours you do, you're able to still maintain a a decent energy level? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think like I've always had like a reasonably good energy anyway. Um, but I think you need to, I say this to Matt all the time. I, I really think it comes down to loving what you do. I really do. I think if you've got a big enough why and you love what you do, what an outstanding combination to be successful. Like I've got a big why, no money, come from nothing. Like didn't have a great connection with my family, big why. And then I just happened to work in real estate and love it. So like that combination has has helped create the success that I've had so far. But I, I can't understand people that, I know some people get stuck and for various reasons, so I, I do get it. But I don't understand people that get up and go to work into a job that they fucking hate every day. Oh, like I, I, it baffles me because you take the leap and we've seen it so many times from here to there, or even start a side business of something you're passionate with and grow it until it earns as much money and then quit your job. Like people that are passionate about something just naturally become successful and enjoy what they do. If I hated real estate, I would have left like it, the, the, the love that I have for this business and helping people buy and sell properties in the area that, that I work in and all that sort of stuff where I live, my friends, all of that, I would have given up when it got it got hard because I would have been like, nah, forget about it. Mm. But it's the passion that keeps you going. Like, I love So when did you find people. that passion though, Jordan? Did you start, like you were telling me you, you got a marketing degree. Yeah. When did you find that passion in real estate? How long did it take to kind of know the, this is my path? The first second. The, like within the first week, I was like, I'm going to be the best at this. And I know that's really weird, but I'm actually like a huge extrovert. Like I, if I didn't have to come home and stay in my house for one night for the rest of my life, I'd be happy. Like I would go out every night and do things with people. I like that. So to, to knock on people's doors and ask them if they need any, any help with their real estate needs and to show buyers properties, like was my dream. I loved that. Love meeting people. So from the beginning and that rush that you get when like you do a deal, like I remember my first one, I was like, oh, it's like the feeling that you get, it's like such a cool feeling. And and that mm. goes, different things come when you get great listings, you get a similar feeling. But I think I love the real estate industry, but become addicted to winning too. Like mm. I want to win at all costs. Like if I'm listing against somebody, I'm taking Matt in with me, we're preparing for two days. Like it, it's like we treat it like a, a, an Olympic athlete. Like that's mm. how that's how much we focus on winning and training and being the best we can like being a professional athlete. So I I just, I just really like it. It's like just being my thing. Some people it's not for them. We have people come into the office all the time and, and, and by all means, the first few years sucked like in like with all of that repetitive work, yeah, you get the odd deal and the good feelings and things like that. But there is a lot of that yuck work that builds a real estate agent. I just knew that if I made it through the first few years, it'll all work out and it's starting to do that now. And and what happens on the days where you're not energized, like the really flat days, like I had days where I'd be knocking for six, seven hours, six, seven hours on end day after day, even on Sundays and you get flat. What happens at that point where you just hit a brick wall? What do you do to get out of that rut? I, I, I just like recognize where I am in that place. And I think one thing as well that gets you deflated in the beginning, which I learned to let go of, and Matt helped me with this, is I used to go, I need to go out and door knocking and get a listing, or I needed to do 10 buyer appointments and get a sale. I don't focus on a listing. I don't focus on a sale, nothing at all. And they just happen to come. 
Like I just have 30 buyers I like dealing with. I talk to all the time. I just happen to sell them properties because I know what they're after and I like working for them. And I just happen to knock on doors and get listings because I'm more intrigued at who's behind the door and can I help them with something? And the information that I'm giving them, I, I, I know in my heart that they'd be interested in it because we just sold the one that's comparable to theirs for 2.52. And if I say, hey, James, it's Jordan from McGrath, just letting you know that we sold the one down the street for 252. They want to hear that. It's their investment. Mm. I want to know that my shares are up. I want to know that my investments, what's happening with them. So mm. I know that I want the information. So I'm more than happy to go and give it to them. And I think once I let go of them expectations, and I have bad days all the time, but if I have a bad day, I'm just like, oh, cool. Yeah, it's a bad day. When I go to sleep and wake up, it's a new day. And off yeah. we go. But mm, we've been there. Uh, every, yeah. Yeah. And when it comes down to it, like, do you, if you are having a flat day, do you, do you take off an afternoon or do you just push through? Yeah. And I, I'm laughing at this because I think of Matt, Matt goes for a nap in his car. So if <laughs> or he'll go home for a nap because he thinks it was about a week ago, everything was going wrong in the morning and Matt goes, I'm going. And I said, where is it? Just, I just go. I'm just see it comes back an hour later, full new energy. I said, where'd you go? He said, I went for a sleep for an hour. He said, I just couldn't let that energy continue. He said, I just had to put a stop to it and reset and go again. Um, but we have them all the time. Like mm. that's life. But um, I think you, the, if you let it keep going, like you know how people get in that really mm. anxious, like oh, I haven't got a listing in two, mu- two weeks mm-hmm. and, and that they just keep carrying that and it's three months and they've got no sales. Like I think... You just need to try and learn. It's hard, but get the um, like that emotional strength to like really understand where you are and where you need to go from there. Mm. Mm. The more and more I get into it, the, the more and more I realize it's it, it's it's just an energy game. You come to a listing presentation, or you come to a buyer inspection, or you come to a new client meeting for whatever, whether it be for a buyer's agent or a selling agent or whatever it may be. It's all about energy. You don't come with energy, you're not getting the business. You come with energy, you're in with a shot. So 100% agree. And that's sure. the thing with young agents too. Like they say all the time, oh, but he's been in the industry for 25 years. Like, and I've only been in it for two. I've got heaps of listings over agents with triple the amount of experience as me because they're, they're older. They're a bit over it. They go in, they go, oh yeah, you should paint the roof. And yeah, this is a marketing campaign. When you're a young person, you're slick and you're like, this is a cool house. I'm going to represent it that well for you. Like, like how mm. good's that? Like, look at this. Like, you know what? I'm not the most experienced agent, but I'm going to knock this out of the park for you. Like you get mm. them all day. So yeah. you're so, it's, you're so right with that. And I think young agents get caught in like, thinking that experience is what wins business it's so not it's exactly what you said it's well look you're writing a couple of million dollars young guy with a team of four. Mm-hmm. like there's people that have been in the industry for 30 years that have are, have one pa mm-hmm. in a right a quarter of the amount it's true you were What's like that yeah i know you see you see you see josh tesla over in quakers hill and he, he stamps out his competition within the space of a year or two with pretty much next to no experience just the energy thing, the thing with joshy too 100 percent I remember like I caught up with him a couple of times, but he's like, you leave and you're like, Oh, he, like you're like, I like that guy. Like his energy mm. is just, it's such a standout that mm. like, if you're meeting 20 people in the day, you remember his energy. So he, he's e- exceptional at that. Very, very good. Yeah. I got told uh, one of my friends, his dad's a salesperson uh, for some medical company and he was leading all the sales guys and the one thing he said his dad did is he just yelled he just came in and yelled in all the appointments and people just bought because he just bought the energy and it was just yelling um it, it, i think a, a lot of competition is, yeah, and you're right especially with the the people that have been in there for a while they come complacent they come flat and yeah it's just an easy game um i, I guess for you in your position what's some key things that you've taken away from seeing the business go from four to eight. What's a a couple of key things that were major changes for you and the team that kind of bought on $4 million worth of difference? Working a core area really well. Yeah. Like if there's any young agents listening to this podcast, the first thing I would do after this is go and get the Matt Steinway system. So Matt's market share before I started with him was 
about maybe 40%. And now we run at 60 to 70% in both of our core areas that people almost go, oh, don't even worry about going in that area. You'll go broke in the process. And because we, we do the Matt Steinway system so perfectly, like daily calls and daily um, door knocks, weekly DLs, like the list and sold, monthly letter, quarterly report, um, a quarterly like sales brochure, six monthly report. And it's like, it's like a production line. The mm. girls just know that's what happens. That's what happens. That's what happens. So, <laughs> like, it, it, I know that every day that's happening, every week that's happening. It, it's like effortless. And then anything on top of that is is just icing on the cake. But to work in an area like that will get you to fifty percent market share in a number of years. No, no worries about that. Then you're dealing with all of the buyers. And then when you're in a listing presentation, you're like, we sell 60% of the houses here. We've got a, a Wombrel specific database with all of these people looking. Are you mad? Why would you even bother listing it with somebody else? Mm. It's a much different conversation than like trying to go, oh yeah, uh, I've sold a couple here. Like, please use me. People know. They're like, they're just like, I'll oh, just call like Team Steinway. Who else would you call? The one thing I've kind of noticed is you guys haven't reinvented the wheel here. You haven't gone out and had some crazy new prospecting um, script or dialogue that's won you over listings. It's it's consistency over time with good conversations, good quality content being put out and good energy. It, it's not like you guys, and it's no disrespect, you guys are doing, doing obviously massive work, but you guys haven't reinvented the wheel. You're just doing the same, the same more of the same thing for a longer time consistently. Yeah. And when we get a client, we just make sure that by the, the, the time they have settled or whatever it is, that they're like raving things. I think when we had so many listings, like there's probably a lot of people that weren't happy. They would have got a good price, but they weren't happy with the overall experience because we were just too busy. But I think the talking to them every day, like the Matt and I being a part of the communication from the beginning to the end, um, they leave going, wow, what a great experience. Like, We've just started on reviews. There was a lot of there was a long time there where we probably didn't send out a lot of reviews because we weren't sure what was gonna what was going to be said. But now we're getting people saying, "Where well, do you want us to leave a review?" That was the best experience ever. So I think taking great care of the clients that we had has probably added an extra thirty percent to our business. But also too, because we would get um, maybe 100, 150 calls a day. Matt and I started meeting at the end of the day and say, "Who called today?" What did we get out of that? Are there any leads? Um, like we haven't had a database. We never used a database until like two months ago. Isn't wow. that the most mental thing ever? We just That's had great. it in our phone. Now we've got a database that sends out newsletters. We've had somebody working on that with us and um, getting heaps of business from that. Like mm. it, it, it was it was the lady that came in. She said, I cannot believe that you've got $8 million without a database. So that, that we because we were net, we were too busy you'd get you'd literally get hundreds of phone calls and by the end of the day you wouldn't even know what's happened you were literally just like a fire extinguisher just trying to survive but now when the fire extinguisher turns off at the end of the day we'll say okay who called today is there any listings in that does anybody need to go into our chase list in the database is there any hot buyers so we're actually finding who the gold in our day and putting them somewhere and managing it before it was like just low hanging fruit, whatever we could find. Like li listings would sell, would list and we'd be like, fuck me, man. We never mm. spoke to them again. Like a $3 million mm. acre, we just forgot about it because we we're too busy. Just mm. expecting them to call. And people would call back sometimes and say, hey, can you come list our house? And we'd be like, where? Because <laughs> well, there's just so much yeah. thing, so much happening. Now with us, we've got control over what's happening. So we're, yeah, mm. we're not missing anything now. We're not letting any buyers go. We're not letting any leads just drift out into like the wind, like we're all over everything that's coming in. But if we didn't do that daily, it would literally get a week and the phone, who, who's called would change in five hours. And if you mm -hmm. didn't actually work out who called, you'd never see them again. They'd just be yeah. a number being saved, gone. So, so yeah. Jordan, what do, you, what do you feel is more important or are they equally as important? Is it vendor management or buyer management? Take care of your people first, vendors all day they're your business i think like matt always says if you find the listing the buyers will come so 
we do have a, a list of buyers that we speak to daily. Matt doesn't really speak to buyers anymore. I do it on our behalf. I'll say, Matt and I have this, Matt and I have that, check in, that sort of thing. But um, we only deal with a certain amount of people and that's it. Like Charlie, the new guy, he deals with a lot of the warm-ish sort of people and we just deal with people that are going to transact today. But when everything happened with lockdown, it was lucky that we had like a lot of contacts in the area. We just wrote everybody we sat in the office for four hours and we said on one side of the whiteboard we all collectively wrote down names of people that would transact today busting to buy and that was it we wrote down 40 people and then we wrote down all of the appraisals and listings that we had of people that would sell like today as well and we matched them we did 25 deals last month 18 off market wow Huge. 18 off market 18 and what what does that mean for you guys doing off market is that is that a because some agents like going off market because it's it can increase their this last they can do a transaction but some it, it, it stops them from doing their marketing and go you know bringing in more buyers so how do you find that process yeah i get that and it would be probably be different if we were a one or two person show but because like we would have maybe 30 listings on the market now. There's too much for us to manage. And it's a good thing. And that's what I was saying before, because there was so much to manage, we we're missing a lot of stuff. But um, we, we still do it anyway. It's like, it, yeah, it might not get up and get the buyers, but the same process happens. Like, I'll door knock, hey, it's Jordan. We just sold number 59 in the street off market. Sold for 1.62, just letting you know. See, uh, like we still do the door knock, we still do the DL, it still goes on our social, like it's still the whole Matt Styleway system still occurs. So, our prospecting is the same, it just didn't go online. Um, we don't essentially need the buyers as much as everybody else, so we're more than happy to do it off market. And we had no choice really because we were calling people trying to get them online, and they're like, Oh, we'll just wait until the dust settles. So it's like, Well, what would you sell for now? 1.6, cool. Okay, so Mike's looking for that sort of property. Hey, Mike, we've got one, it has to be 1.6. Bang, 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 bang. So we just every month we do business a little bit different depending on what's happening externally, but we do the same amount of business at all cost. Business plan still the same 20 and 20, no matter how we do it. Now, I, yeah. I, I, sell, I sell quite a few off market as well. I get a lot of pushback um, from other agents. Like I had a drop that went out to the entire suburb um, last month from one of my competitors, um, pretty much slamming me for selling stuff off market. Do you get that as well? That's the thing with market share. Like there's, there's just us and then there's like, I don't even know who. So... Yeah. It, it literally Wombrel, the market share is that good there that like people just happen to pick up listings there because they're friends. Like no one really even, there's not really a, like property central are okay, but they kind of sell over the other side, but no, I wouldn't say so, but we don't worry about what's happening externally. We just worry about mm. what's happening in our team and what we need to do every day mm. to do 20 and 20. And that's it. Mm, mm. Just focus on your own stuff, right? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Well, um, Jordan, thanks for coming along. Obviously, just being mindful of your timing here. Um, I just wanted to ask one quick question. I know you said that um, just a like parting type of question, unless Daniel has anything, but I know you said you're big on Audible. What's the number one book you've listened to? Rich Dad, Poor Dad for investing. Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Cool. Appreciate yeah, I, it. I, I'm very in the mm -hmm. mind, like... I don't know if I would buy into a real estate business. I'm very like property investing because I think mm. property will always be there, but a business can go like that. Like you can mm. work in business for 20 years and something happens externally, not purple bricks, but something could like disrupt the real estate industry and everything is in one spot can be gone, but they're not mm. just going to wipe out half of the terrible residential houses. So mm. I, I think Real estate's simple. You just got to do a good job, do the best job you can for everybody, but take as much fucking money out that you can, spend as less as possible and put it into appreciating real estate. So that's why I like that book because it pretty much outlines how to do it. You've, you've read it, I'm sure. Yeah, I've read it, yeah. yeah. Appreciate yeah. the advice for yeah. sure, 100%. Thank you, mate. I've got, one last, I've got one last question for you, Jordan. What's been the biggest challenge you've had to overcome outside of real estate? 
Change, cha- changing, losing some friends. Mm. What do you mean by that? Like, I, I've got a lot of friends. I, I know a lot of people, but I knew to go from here to there, I had to let go of my old friends. I had to. Like, they just love them to death. But my friendship group now are all worth $10, 20000000 million, very successful in their own right. Talk about business, talk about success, about energy, all that stuff. I think the circle that I'm in now is probably one of the reasons like that I've done this by done what I've done by this age. I think if I was still hanging around the group of friends that didn't have the ambitions that I have, the investing knowledge, all this sort of stuff, I'd probably be the average of them five people. And now I'm the average of this five people, but that was really hard. Like I've polarized a lot of young people in the process and I've lost a lot of friends too, because for a young person, anybody be like a young person giving it a crack it, it makes people, it's like a mirror. It reflects it back at what they're doing. And the first mm. thing they normally say is, fuck that guy. Like, yeah. Was there a mate you had that, had that reflection with you? Uh, it's not so much one, one person. And I'm still friends with lots of people. It, 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 it's, it's more that I just n- knew that I needed to go to a, a different place, mm. which is really hard because... They're friends. They've been with you your whole life. But at some point, and Dan Penner, lots of people say this, you show me your friends, I'll show you your yeah. future. Everybody knows that. He's and a machine. I think that was a tricky thing for me. Yeah, That's powerful. Awesome. Mm. Thank you. Well, I'm Jordan. Thanks for coming along. Um, yeah, we'll chat to you soon. Thank you. Love doing it. Thanks, See Jordan. you, fellas. Awesome, mate. Talk to you soon. Bye.